Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Hi, and welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Economics. This is Unit 4, Part 5. In today's lesson we will be learning about competition. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. Why do firms compete? Firms compete to increase their customer base, increase their sales, expand their market share, achieve product superiority, enhance their image and the image of their products. This is to ultimately increase profits. Competition between firms is good for the consumer. Competition encourages profit-seeking firms to use their resources efficiently to compete on prices and products, so that consumers buy from them. You must be aware of two types of competition. Firstly, price competition. Competing with rival suppliers on product price. But if demand is price inelastic, revenue will fall. If price is cut below average cost, each unit will be sold at a loss. Secondly, non-price competition. Competing on all other product features other than price. For example, new product development, after sales care, and promotions including advertising, in-store displays, competitions. Let's look at the power of advertising. It can create an increase consumer wants for a product. It can create a powerful brand image for a product and increase customer loyalty. Brand loyalty has the following benefits. It leads to repeat purchases. It protects sales and market share. Customers are willing to pay more for the brand. Customers continue to buy the brand if the producer increases its price over rival products. It can reduce competition however. Smaller firms will be unable to spend as heavily on advertising as larger rivals. Now, let's look at the pricing strategies used by firms to gain an advantage. Firstly, let's look at demand-based pricing. Price skimming is an example of this, this is where we set the price if there is little competition. This is great if you are the supplier. This allows you to make abnormal amounts of revenue as you have a captive audience. Secondly, penetration pricing. This is when we set a low price for a new product to boost its sales and increase market share. Next, let's look at competition-based pricing. First, predatory pricing. This is where you undercut the prices of rival firms in an attempt to drive them out of business. But predatory pricing, also called destruction pricing, can result in damaging price wars where it hurts all companies. Next, price leadership. This is where rivals set their prices at or near the price charged by the market leader to avoid a price war. Lastly, cost-based pricing. Cost plus pricing is where we set the price equal to average cost plus a fixed or percentage markup for profit. But this takes no account of what consumers may be willing to pay or how much competition there is to supply the market. But what is the structure of the market? What does it look like? The characteristics of a market include how many firms compete to supply it, the degree of competition between them, the extent of their product differentiation, and the ease with which new firms can enter the market to compete with them. With perfect competition, there are many suppliers with identical products. As a result, individual firms have no control over market price. On the other end of the spectrum, there is a pure monopoly. This is where there is a single large supplier. And, because of this, the monopoly firm can determine market price. There are gradations in between. Firstly, let's look at competitive markets. A competitive market will display many of the following features. There will be vigorous price competition and non-price competition between firms. Firms will pursue different pricing strategies. Product features and brand images will be highly differentiated. The range of product designs available and the quality of after-sales services will tend to change frequently. Market shares and profits of competing businesses will vary over time. New firms will be able to enter the market and less efficient firms that are unable to compete will be forced to close.
Now let's talk about monopolies. A single firm or group of firms acting together with sufficient market power to restrict competition and set the market price is a monopoly. A pure monopoly controls the total supply of a product to a market. A monopoly may restrict supply to force up the market price and earn up normal profits. These are excess profits above what they would be if there was competition. There are many problems with monopoly power. A monopoly may abuse its market power to restrict market supply to force up market price, restrict competition and consumer choice, cut product quality to save costs. In addition, a monopoly may be poorly managed and inefficient because it does not face any competition. Governments may have to use resources to investigate and punish abuses of market power. How do monopolies restrict competition? Artificial barriers to entry may be used by a monopoly to restrict competition unfairly by using predatory or destruction pricing to force rivals out of business, threatening major suppliers that it will stop buying from them if they supply rival firms, threatening retailers to stop supplying them with their product if they stock rival products. But natural barriers to entry are not necessarily bad. They occur because large-scale production is often more efficient. Smaller firms may be unable to compete with larger firms on costs and revenues because large firms may enjoy significant economies of scale that give them a natural monopoly. Small firms cannot match the capital investment needed for large-scale production. Large firms may have built up significant customer loyalty over time. Some large firms may have a legal monopoly because they have patents to protect their innovative products and technologies from being copied abuses of market power. How do we regulate competition? A competition policy refers to measures governments use to control the behavior of firms acting anti-competitively and against the interests of consumers. This can be by regulating the prices and service levels of monopolies, Imposing fines on firms that abuse their market power. Forcing monopolies to break up into smaller, competing firms. Another thing we can do is consumer protection laws, which protect consumers from exploitation and harmful business activities. For example, it is an offense to sell goods or services which are unsafe or in an unsatisfactory condition or to mislead consumers about prices and products. Not all monopolies are bad however. A firm that is a monopoly may still act competitively and be good for consumers if it is a more efficient producer with lower costs than smaller firms. It faces competition from firms overseas and consumers are able to choose products that are close substitutes. Its market is contestable, i.e. there are few or no barriers to entry. It invests its profits in new product developments. Some revolutionary products, like the jumbo jet and photocopier, may never have been developed if the business organizations that invented them were unable to enjoy monopoly profits. Abnormal profits were a reward for their significant investment risks. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.